You're listening to the One Minute Writing Tip, a podcast that gives you tips on how to overcome writer's block, overwhelm, and self-doubt, learn how to accomplish your God-given book idea, even if you're a busy mompreneur, confidently publish to bestseller, and use your book as a tool for impact and for purpose. We have a variety of episodes with interviews from best-selling authors in the industry, experts who have tools and tricks to help you succeed, and of course, recommendations from me, your host, Caitlin Silva. You can find even more resources on wewritebooks.com where you can also take advantage of your complimentary bestseller assessment to get a step-by-step roadmap to accomplish your bestseller and beyond. So let's get into today's episode. And welcome back to the One Minute Writing Tip Podcast. I'm super excited for today's author guest. I'm talking to Joshua Rutherford. Josh has wanted to be a writer all his life from an early age, and his imagination has just taken flight, allowing him to dream up worlds and universes expansive enough to hold many character settings and stories, which sounds amazing, uh, from refugees and assassins to knights and kings. Josh has always thought to integrate his beliefs and experiences into the tapestry of his writing. As an unapologetic introvert, he gives special attention to the shy, quiet underdogs of the world as his protagonists hail from diverse environments where they often find themselves overlooked or misunderstood. Wow, that sounds extremely interesting. Josh, thank you so much for joining me. It's such an honor to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Caitlin. It's a pleasure to be here. So will you just kick us off by talking about your journey to actually becoming a writer from, you know, times past from your early childhood? Yeah, definitely. So my journey has been very nonlinear in spite of the fact uh, I am a um, recovering type A personality. Um, I've wanted to create stories my entire life. And uh, from early childhood, uh, I thought that that would originally take me to become a filmmaker. And I had aspirations to become a filmmaker, specifically uh, to start in screenwriting and to go from there. And that was my main focus in college. I went to UC Santa Cruz, uh, focused on film and digital media as my major. And then after college, I uh, uh, went into uh, drafting a number of screenplays for feature films, as well as teleplays. Now, um, all of this um, was not without uh, some struggle. Uh, my writing, especially when it comes to trying to write in a, um, let's say, a medium such as screenwriting, uh, is very formatted. And I struggle to really adapt my style, my voice to that very, let's say, rigid format. Um, however, I made some headway. But uh, once the Great Recession hit, uh, any leads that I had, which weren't many, dried up on the screenwriting front. And uh, I continued to dabble in screenwriting, but I just felt like this energy really pulling me to really express myself in a more liberated medium. And that's when I turned to novel writing. Now, all this happened uh, while I was you know, living my life, having a day job, and then uh, eventually getting married and having a family. So I really had to carve out a lot of time uh, to do and pursue this novel writing Um And that led to a lot of creativity in the writing process, uh, which I'll share later on in this episode. But that also led to a lot of uh, self-discovery on my part as a writer and as a person in general. Wow, I love that. And I love how, you know, despite things kind of drying up for you, you still recognize, okay, but this is about creativity. And how can I pivot and still find a thing that is going to work for me and that's going to you know, have the results and the fruitfulness that I'm looking for. I love that so much. And, you know, you're talking about how you became a father and how, you know, you just started exploring all of those, those things that were inside of you, the creativity and and the more, like you said, liberated, you know, formats. Uh, I know that, that screenplays need to be, you know, a certain structure and and you approach a different way than when you're writing a novel, you know, or creating a world in, in that way. And so just kind of talk to me about, what that process was like for you. And, you know, you you were carving out this time for yourself for writing. And I truly believe that, you know, writing itself, like, is a transformational experience. Like, you can't write a book without having some kind of personal transformation because of the nature of the process. So talk to me about that process for you and, you know, how that really integrated with you 
having all these life changes and life transitions going on? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you hit the nail on the head in that, uh, especially for someone like me, writing is so cathartic and it is a just a journey of self-discovery. And I found that many, many, many times in my life, probably too many at this point, uh, going through uh, different uh, writing projects. Um, in particular, uh, making the transition from screen screenwriter to novelist. Um, I remember there was uh, this piece of feedback that I um, received from a producer. He gave me back producer's notes on a script, um, uh, which he pretty much just tore apart. And I remember sitting with that feedback and thinking to myself, this is one person's professional opinion, but it's an opinion. And where, I, where do I go from here? And that really served as the catalyst for me penning my first novel. And what is kind of, a, I won't say ironic, but let's just say um, off the heels of that criticism of one screenplay, which was completely torn apart, my inspiration for writing my first novel was from the story of another screenplay that was also torn apart. So not to self-sabotage myself or to pick on uh, like stories that were kind of tossed into the heap, but every story that I try to craft and have within myself, I just feel that there's so much there. And, uh, you know, again and again, I, I continue to go back to these ideas, these projects, which some of which I've abandoned, but others, which I've really kind of picked up and kind of given their own legs to kind of uh, take on a life of their own. And I think that's really central to my writing process is to really find ideas that uh, are bigger than myself, bigger than my worries, my anxieties, or even my hopes and uh, dreams and inspirations, and uh, to try to give them as much life as possible um, so that they can live beyond me. And so that, um, you know, when I'm writing, my character's own almost have their own voices apart from my own, although oftentimes they reflect my own too. So um, yeah, definitely finding those larger than life moments. Yeah. In my writing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. There's just so much there, but it's so <laughs> true. Like, I think it's so important to, you know, recognize that just because something doesn't turn out the way you hoped or that you wanted, doesn't mean that you give up on it. Like, you just pivot and you find, okay, where's the lesson for me in this? Where's the opportunity? How can I make a change or make a transition to still pursue this end goal that I'm looking for? And I, I feel like that's going to be kind of this thread as we're talking because, you know, that, that's come up now and, and it's part of your journey. And I think that it's so cool that you're sharing that your process has been taking those things that were, were thrown into the heaps, as you said, and then transforming them into something that actually ended up becoming a good thing in your life, you know, and then leading to more opportunity. So, you know, specifically as you have become a dad and um, and you've started to explore different facets of your life, um, how has that really fit into your writing and how has that affected your approach to writing as well? Yeah, well, in becoming a dad, um, definitely time management has uh, taken on a life of its own and has forced me to become more flexible and adaptable. Uh, when I wrote my first novel, I did it just before I had my first child. So that process looked wildly different than all the novels that came afterwards uh, because uh, carving out large blocks of time, whether it be in the morning or uh, in the evening, I was previously both a morning writer and a night writer. Um, both of those have really kind of required a lot more fluidity in my life because it doesn't matter how early I get up or how late I stay up. There's always um, a child that is either crying or needs a drink of water or something else in the background that has, um, let's just say, um, caused pauses in my writing process. But that's also been an opportunity, too, because now um, I think I'm much more natural at, say, stepping away from my writing after like a stint and then coming back with a fresh perspective. And I really think having that just kind of even if it's just to you know, provide my child with a drink of water or something uh, very organic in that nature, 
Um, it, it's just, you know, those little like pauses and interruptions help me to get outside my own head, which sounds somewhat counterintuitive for a writer, but it also allows me to take a step back to see what I've done and to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. So kind of those little kind of tweaks and pauses I've integrated more into my writing. So instead of having a four hour block of writing, I may have lots of little blocks of writing spread out throughout the day. Mm. Yeah, no, I love that. And I can relate so much uh, because, you know, I'm a busy mom and uh, I have my my kiddos at home frequently. Well, actually all the time, but I mean, you know, sometimes they go out and do things, but, um, but yeah, I, I completely understand what you mean. And it's about, you know, being more intentional as well, I think, and, you know, really looking at your time from a different perspective. And I think you hit the nail on the head with that too, is that when you have children and you have, you know, parental responsibilities, all of a sudden, you know, they're your priority. Like they come first, but your writing is still really important. And so it's just looking at it in a balanced way and looking at the positive outcomes and shifting your thinking around, okay, maybe I don't have in the morning and the evening, like, an, like several hours, but I do have like, you know, 30 minutes here or an hour here or, you know, and you work it in, you know, in a, in a really intentional and purposeful kind of way and it still works really well and it can be something that actually ends up becoming very fruitful because to your point as opposed to sitting there for like hours and and just kind of like getting stuck in the weeds and everything all of a sudden you're like oh oh I have this new idea or like something that maybe you were stuck on all of a sudden feel like fresh juice and fresh motivation and fresh excitement and you're like oh I can't wait to dive back in because you just kind of it's almost like you give yourself a cliffhanger you know, as the writer for your own story, and you can't wait to continue and kind of see where it goes. And that's, I think, super exciting and super fun. So I exactly. love that you shared that as well. Um, so, okay, you mentioned that time has definitely shifted for you in writing, and that your, you know, your, your actual process has kind of changed as you've had to do different things and approach it in different ways. So what would be your biggest challenges that you would say come, that come up for you during the writing process as you're trying to actually create your books? I'd say my biggest challenges are to um, stay consistent in my output. Uh, certainly my imagination and creativity, um, I won't say they've been impacted, but the impact to that has not been as noticeable as say my output. Uh, and by that, I mean, you know, one week I might have a lot of time to write and I might pat myself on the back and like, oh, way to go, Josh. You got so many pages done. And then the next week, because of many interruptions or conflicting responsibilities, I might not get any writing done or the writing I get done is not to my standards. So really um, kind of being conscious of those um, checks and balances I have to do and really managing my time and my output have been something that uh, I've struggled with, I'll be honest. And, uh, you know, out of that uh, entire process that now my kids are five and seven, so it's been years and years that I've had a chance to, let's say, uh, revisit this and refine this as much as possible. Um, I've learned to be very, not only intentional, but very forgiving of myself and very compassionate. And that's been a struggle for me, you know, being a recovering type A personality and, a recovering perfectionist to be more of a realist as a writer. Yeah, no, I was literally thinking that as you were talking, I was thinking, yes, you have to have grace with yourself so much. And I can see that as well, especially with the screenwriter background where you have like, it's so rigid and you do have to fit into, you know, the, the format and the approach and the structure and in order for it to even go on to the next level, I have to have a certain like rating and just so many different facets that they, that is challenging. And, and when you're used to kind of fitting into a certain box and then all of a sudden everything kind of gets flipped upside down and changed and, and it's, it's so different. It's like, whoa, how do I measure myself now? How do I measure my thinking around what I'm accomplishing and my success and like all those different things? And I think it is important to be realistic and to look at your situation in a very, not, not like, like, you, like you said, not just with intention and purpose, but also with grace and compassion and applying that same that we receive, you know, from the Lord to ourselves in our lives, like through writing or anything else we're doing from any venture. 
I think that's so important. It's such a good point that you made. Um, and I think, you know, your output just isn't going to be the same. It's like just being a parent, your output, if you're a single person with no responsibilities other than just your work and whatever you're working on at home or whatever it is, it's always going to be dynamically different than when you have, you know, all these different other things going on. So, yeah, I 100 percent relate to that point. So carrying that through, talking about how you're having grace with yourself, you're, you're you know, doing these little tiny blocks of time as you pause and step away. What would be your top one to three kind of tips or suggestions for aspiring authors who have been wanting to write a book for a very long time, but they've been held back by like doubts and fears and struggles through that process? I'd start by saying that the writing process is something where you need very deliberate practice. I know that term has been thrown around in a lot of self-help books and everything, but how I'm using it uh, for the purposes of this podcast is deliberate practice and that um, tweaks and pivoting and changing a plan is essential to really becoming a su successful author, at least in my opinion, because I know so many would-be writers who get so stuck on trying to forge a very rigid plan that they never even get started. They think they have to get every single step right and that they can't deviate from their plan in order to reach an end goal. Um, there's one thread that I read on social media that says, never have a plan B, which I completely disagree with because too many people, especially writers, conflate a plan with an objective or a goal. And really a plan should be fluid and it should be flexible and it should allow for practice where you can pivot and change and go in the right direction and look back at what you've done as well as what's ahead in order to help you meet your writing objective and goal. So uh, going back to those things we touched upon about grace and compassion, that really needs to be built into your practice as a writer in order not only for you to get started, but to stay in that rhythm and to find your flow and to make headway towards your goal as a writer. Yeah, absolutely. I love what you shared there. And I think it's so important, like you said, especially as a writer, to recognize that you know, having that objective, like finishing my manuscript or publishing this book or, you know, editing X number of times or whatever it is that I think it's like we get so caught up in the goal and the vision of like what we're trying to accomplish that we don't take that time to do the groundwork that allows us to actually take real steps to get there. It becomes kind of this inflated vision in our head. And I mean, I, I can speak for a lot of writers that, that have that happen. And all of a sudden it feels like this big overwhelming project as opposed to just one step at a time. And I think it's so important to take that objective and that end goal and kind of reverse engineer and break it down into, okay, you know, it's not that I have to sit down and in two days over like eight hours a day, I write this whole thing, you know, like that's totally unrealistic for most people. But I think it's more of looking at it like, okay, if I can accomplish X amount of words in like 30 minutes a day, and I just write every day for like 30 minutes a day, I can do that. Or, you know, maybe it's a couple hours out of the whole week, like, like when you have a day off from your regular job or whatever, you know, and you do sit down and you just make consistent progress. And if you get stuck on something, it's like, okay, I'm going to make a note to myself and I'm going to move on from that to the next thing that I feel inspired about or that I do feel clear on or that I can write a little bit and just get some content on the page so that you're making progress and you feel like you're staying in momentum and you're not just staying stuck, you know? And I think you have such a good point there on like being able to pivot and take deliberate action and, you know, continue to move forward with each step while maintaining that grace and compassion and not being like, Oh, I didn't write a thousand words today. I only wrote 500. Hey, 500 is great. You know, you made progress, you know? So I think that's so critical and so important. That's excellent um, advice for our aspiring author listeners. So as you've talked about how you pin books, there's been multiple. Um, are there any upcoming projects, projects that you would like to share about or anything kind of uh, in the works that's kind of exciting and that you'd like to share about? Yeah, definitely. Well, my current projects, I'm currently on book three of a six book series. And that first book uh, actually 
um, came out um, a few years ago with the birth, actually, gosh, now five years ago, uh, more than five years ago, with the birth of my second son. Uh, that first book in the series is called Kinghood. And that led to the second installment called Peacefall. And now I'm working on the third installment. So uh, as being part of a six book series, it's very um, you know, momentous and it's very epic. Um, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, it's something that has been a labor of love for me. I'm very passionate about it um, because this epic fantasy series uh, pulls in themes from my life, such as, um, you know, uh, growing up multiracial and growing up from like a mixed heritage background to also incorporating themes um, and many life lessons I learned through fatherhood. So uh, that book series um, is something that will be coming out for years and years to come with the next four books. Uh, but the previous two books, uh, Kinghood and Peacefall, are currently on Amazon. And uh, you can find them there. And uh, I love it. Um, I love connecting also with uh, audience members. And uh, they can follow me on my um, social media as well as uh, the website, which I know we'll be sharing at the end of this uh, episode. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which actually, that kind of brings me back to what we talked about in the intro about how your approach to your writing blends these different things. Like a lot of people love, you know, just like these huge expansive universes or like some people really just like the more medieval type fantasy with like kings and knights and castles and, and horses and, you know, kind of magic mixed in and stuff. And then some people like, you know, other aspects of fantasy. And I love how you know, you kind of integrate those different facets into your world building. And just from the title of your books, I'm like, Ooh, those sound really interesting. I'm like, I want to go check them out. So um, I would love to hear a little bit more from you on well, some details of those books. Since you're on book three, you know, uh, what can readers expect if they check out the books um, and just kind of talk about maybe the main character or just, the, you know, just tell me a little bit more about the story. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'll try to keep it concise because I could talk for hours and hours about my characters and in particular this book series. Uh, but yeah, the first book in the installment, Kinghood, it focuses on identical quadruplets. So four brothers, and they all live a life of a lie in that they are acting as one, one royal, one prince at the start of this book series. So they take rotations uh, playing the part of this prince because um, following a hundred year war, the threat of assassination and usurping is around every corner. So they've grown and they've adapted to this life where they have to pretty much not be themselves. And um, to use kind of a term um, that's oftentimes not used in fantasy, they have to code switch. They have to be a different person when they're in the guise of this prince. And in book one of the Four Point Chronicles, my um, epic fantasy series, I build upon uh, themes of betrayal, but also brotherhood uh, and um, uh, you know finding first love and coming of age uh, within Kinghood, um, where the princes kind of learn how to be more responsible, but also more true to themselves. Those themes continue in book two, Peacefall, and uh, there the princes find that things get a little bit more complicated as life goes on and they take on more responsibilities, including a royal marriage, as well as uh, the start of a military campaign. So they found themselves challenged as well as their bonds of, as brothers challenged as well, too. And then that leads to uh, the impetus for my third book, where things really start to escalate in terms of military campaigns and battles and uh, stresses on the kingdom, but also the stresses that these brothers uh, really kind of have to internalize because no one knows their secret. So not only are they not able to express themselves, all that stress has to go somewhere. And uh, certainly a lot of that has, to, you know, I pull a lot of um, experiences from my own life, my own mental health journey, my own experience um, being multiracial and kind of feeling like an island unto myself. And uh, a lot of that will continue through the rest of the installment. Wow. Okay. That sounds so interesting. I am, um, I'm personally an epic fantasy person, kind of, you know, my, my, my secret uh, alter ego, if you want to say. Uh, so that's really cool. I will uh, have to check those out. And 
Of course, for our listeners, I hope that you find that equally intriguing and that especially those of you who like to enjoy epic fantasy, that you want to go check those out. So for all my listeners, if you do want to connect with Josh and check out his work, I would highly recommend doing so. Uh, Go to his website, joshuakrutherford.com, which I will include in the description for you guys. So make sure you guys check that out. And Josh, thank you again so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you, Kaylin. It's been a pleasure. It was so great to talk to you. And yeah, um, I look forward um, to staying connected um, and not only with you, but also um, with those that check out my website, check out my works. Um, I love connecting with other readers and, uh, you know, having them uh, share my journey. Yeah, absolutely. So for all my listeners, thank you also for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you leave a review wherever you're listening from and that you tune in on the next one. Thanks so much again for tuning in to the One Minute Writing Tip podcast. I hope this episode gave you some great things to consider and helped you make just another shift to be able to accomplish your writing goals. If you'd like to connect further, go to wewritebooks.com or take the opportunity to get your complimentary bestseller assessment to help you finally dig into where your biggest challenges have been map out the best next steps for you and get my personal recommendation so that you can accomplish your writing goals. Go to wewritebooks.com slash bestseller assessment. And I can't wait to connect with you further from there. Remember to like and comment below on this episode and I will see you on the next one.